you know just like when somebody is ill they go to a doctor and the doctor treats them with a tablet or an injection so baba says you children can treat yourself with the tablet and injection of happiness so because you know in uh, baba is called bedyanath so baba is called the supreme surgeon and we are his children so we are also master surgeons so baba says you can treat yourself by giving yourself the tablet or the injection of happiness and whenever you feel low whenever you feel you know whenever these days people call it the illness of the mind so whenever you feel that you want to take care of your mind just give yourself a tablet of happiness or an injection of happiness and what is the tablet and injection of happiness so baba has told us baba has given us these doses of uh, you know what tablets and injections to take so you see that whenever you don't feel uh, you know mentally uh, okay so not like mental illness or something but when you feel low in the mind or you know there's negative thoughts or there's overthinking or whatever at that time you could just treat yourself with this tablet that i am a soul and i am completely detached from the world around me i am not this body i am not this world and my nature my quality is happiness so you could just stabilize yourself in your quality of happiness by shifting your consciousness from body consciousness to soul consciousness so do you understand that we keep shifting our consciousness all the time all through the day also we engage in this shifting of consciousness and how do you do that so you see that when you are at home sitting relaxed then your consciousness is i'm a i'm in my home and sitting relaxed but as soon as it's time to go to office then your consciousness is i'm an employee or i have an office to attend to and then what happens suddenly all the stress and the tension related to the work that you do starts coming up so why because your consciousness has shifted from i am a householder to i am an employee and you see that when your consciousness shifts your attitude your feelings everything start to shift your way of thinking also starts to shift so similarly baba says that as soon as you switch into soul consciousness how do you switch into soul consciousness you just take a moment and remind yourself stabilize yourself in the awareness that i am not this body i am not this physical world i am not the i am not the one that i think i am in this physical world i am not the mother or the father or the child or the sister or the brother i am just a tiny little soul here on a journey and in the forehead of the body i am sitting like a star sparkling and what am i like i am very still very silent very peaceful very happy and as soon as you stabilize yourself in your original religion original form and original religion your mind will also start working differently because as is your consciousness so is your mind and intellect baba tells something very nicely today that people say that i want peace of mind 
but the mind and intellect are part of the soul they are the organs of the soul and it depends on what consciousness the soul is in and that consciousness determines the state of your mind and intellect so you see that if you are soul conscious then your mind will be peaceful and where will your intellect be when you are a soul your intellect your buddhi yoga will be with baba because you know that baba is the one who is going to give me everything and when you are body conscious your mind will be all over the place thinking about the matters related to the body and the physical world and also your intellect will be connected with this world of sorrow and the the rule says the law says that your when your intellect is connected to the world of sorrow your mind will start experiencing sorrow yes so or your intellect is connected with the impure world then you cannot feel peaceful and happy and joyful so baba says but in body consciousness where will your intellect be it will be connected with the relatives you have or with the body you have because you're body conscious so you think that this is who i am and this is mine and that is why your intellect is connected to the body and bodily relations when you are body conscious so let's say you know uh you you so you are hearing the class right now but if you are body conscious then what happens that if you get up from the class and you have an argument with somebody who you call your own then your mind will start having thoughts you know overthinking about why did they say this to me what wrong did i do or why am i being treated like this so all of these thoughts will come up why because your buddhi yoga is with a human soul and every human soul right now is in a state of impurity and when somebody is in a state of impurity what kind of words will they speak what kind of actions will they perform they will do as they are and then what happens is because your buddhi yoga is with them you also start picking on that energy of peacelessness and unhappiness and you also start thinking about it but what you have to understand is i am a soul and my quality i am like the star of light very distinct from this body and this old world and my quality is peace joy love all the time i'm a pure soul and i draw power and love from baba and feel baba's presence and rejoice in baba's company all the time and even when we operate in this world so let's say you in this state of soul consciousness you have an argument or you know somebody starts tries to have an argument with you or somebody is alleging you for something or somebody is telling you some words which are you know which are not true or which are true or whatever so when they are saying that what is the attitude you will have in soul consciousness the attitude you will have is that every soul is depleted right now so when they are depleted they will talk like this and i don't have to take it personally i have to help the soul heal themselves and how do you do that by talking normally to them and lovingly to them despite whatever they are saying so you know even if somebody is hurling abuses at you you know that they are not doing it because of you they are doing it because of themselves do you get this that everybody is doing what they are doing not because of you but because of themselves and when you understand that 
you try to be compassionate and help them by not you know not playing on that their energy and not participating with that same energy but you try to talk to them truthfully peacefully lovingly and you try to have a normal conversation with faith and love in your heart and when you do that then that energy starts to finish or dissipate so this is how you behave or you respond in soul consciousness and when you are body conscious and your intellects yoga is with that person then what happens is you think this is mine so whatever they are saying must have some truth in it and either you start bashing them for talking like that because you are in desperate uh, you know seeking of their approval and you want them to say that all they said is wrong and you want them to admit that they were wrong in saying it because if they said it then you will have self doubt so this is why you will start bashing them or you will start blaming yourself that you know i'm a bad person and this is why this person is saying this and there is obviously some truth to it so all these things will start happening when you are in body consciousness so baba says that you have to understand that i am a soul and my quality my religion is knowledge purity peace love happiness bliss and power and you stabilize yourself in this original religion by switching into soul consciousness so how do you switch into soul consciousness sit peacefully tell yourself that this body is belongs to this world everything that is around me every person every soul everything the work that i do everything belongs to this world and i do not belong to this world i belong to the soul world and <clears throat> i have come to this world to play my role and i have taken this body to play my role and this is the time i want to just see myself as i am and who am what am i like i am like this tiny star which is radiating the light of stability peace love joy and power and just stabilize yourself in that original state and in that state you will remember that only shiv baba is mine and you will turn your attention towards that own ocean of peace ocean of love who is constantly filling you filling your heart your mind everything with his love his peace his joy and in his company you start feeling complete so the more you engage in this exercise in the switching into soul consciousness then you will be able to operate in soul consciousness when you come into action and when you are body conscious then naturally your yoga with intellects yoga will be with the impure world and when people who when souls who are you know who have lost their power they speak they act then those actions are not pure or powerful and then because your intellects yoga is with them you also start you know go getting to the trap of that energy and you also start consuming and absorbing that energy and you also start behaving like that so let's say you know there is one person uh who you have uh, when your body conscious who do you have at who's in uh, with whom do you have your intellects yoga your relatives your friends your parents your you know husband spouse or children so that is who you have yoga with now suppose uh your spouse or your child is somebody who doesn't believe in god yes uh, he is somebody who doesn't or she is somebody who doesn't believe in god 
and somebody who has the sanskar of mistrust. So have you seen those people who have the sanskar of mistrust and they would for everything they would say, you know, this is too good to be true and they will keep rejecting everything that is good because they think that everything that is good can't be true. And this sanskar of mistrust will tell them that everything that looks good, there is a red flag to it. And everything that's bad is normal, natural good. So if it is bad, then it is acceptable. But if it is good, then you have to question it because that cannot be true because it's too good to be true. So that's the sanskar of mistrust. And what happens is, if you have your, now you are a soul, you have your own journey, right? So you came to Baba, you took the course, you recognized Baba. And recognizing Baba is a very, uh, what do you say, it's a very subtle thing, you know, it's something done with the third eye. So it's, a, it's very subtle and that recognition is is, in, is, in, is from a place in you which is very subtle and you know that this is Baba and your heart is calling out to you that you know you must listen to knowledge and you must do what Baba says but you're still body conscious and then what happens is your intellect's yoga is with somebody who has the sanskar of mistrust and then what they do is they start talking about Baba and Gyan in a negative way and they will start saying you know it's okay but don't fall into the trap or you know don't <laughs> don't do daily class and don't do this and that and then you know that starts having an effect on you that starts influencing your power of discernment because you see, you discerned, you decided, you discerned, you had the power to discern that this is God. But the other soul who is not having that power to discern, they start influencing you because you are connected to them in, with the intellect, because you are body conscious. And Baba is saying that this is Sang Dosh. So, you know, don't have this influence of bad company. So, you know, every soul is on their own, on their own journey and every soul has a right to make choices. And Baba says, you make a choice according to your blueprint. Don't make a choice by being influenced by somebody. But the thing is, this influence will happen where there is attachment. So if there is attachment, if you are body conscious and you are attached to people, places, things and body, your own body, then they will have an influence with, on you because where there is attachment, your intellect's yoga is connected to them. And the law says that wherever your intellect's yoga is connected, they will have an influence on you. So this is something that we need to be wary about and Baba says if you want to give yourself an injection of happiness then just sit in this awareness that I am a soul and I am this happy being of light and remember the ocean of happiness and remember the happy things that Baba tells you. What does Baba tell us? That we were a deity and we are going to be a deity. We were in that world where nothing was unavailable for 2500 years. So do you understand that for 2500 years you were in that world when nothing was unavailable and you are again going to that world. And then the most important point of happiness is you have Baba with you at this point, God himself who is there with you. And I was just thinking, you know, that if you just for a second 
remembered and came to the awareness that God the Almighty, the ocean of virtues, the ocean of powers, the one who is the bestower of fortune is here for me, then you will never be able to lose your happiness. And Baba says, give yourself this tablet or injection of happiness whenever you feel low. And then Baba says, even in times of disease, you know, when the body is going through something, when the body is going through an illness, then also take Baba's light and might and allow that, allow your body to, you know, uh, that illness to pass or, you know, just don't allow that illness to stop anything, stop you from creating your fortune by taking the light and might from God. And let me tell you one thing that we have understood the knowledge of the drama and according to the knowledge of the drama, what time are we living in? We are living right now in the confluence age and this confluence age is the end of Kaliyug and the beginning of Satyug. And in this confluence age, the reality is that the all the sins that we have created for 63 births, all those karmic accounts are going to manifest themselves in this confluence age. And they are manifesting themselves. And that is why, you know, illness, physical illness is one big method through which karmic accounts manifest themselves. All the burden of sins manifest themselves. And this is why in this, at this time, if you look around, there is rarely anybody who is not going through a physical disease. Yes. And if you, so you know, um, when I, when I was, uh, you know, when I didn't know much, at that time I thought that when you have a disease, you go to a doctor and that doctor will treat you and you will be fine. <laughs> so I used to have this simplistic notion that, you know, when you have a physical disease, you go to a doctor and the doctor will treat you and you will be fine. But now I have understood that when you have a physical disease, you go to a doctor. For most diseases, the doctors will say there is no cure available. <laughs> and for many, they would say that, you know, even if there is a cure, it will take a long time or, you know, these medicines will have this side effect and that side effect. So, you know, when there is a physical disease, you do the best you can by going to the doctor and taking the medicines. But you must know that if you are waiting for the disease to go away and, only, and you're putting your life on halt because you think that you will start again when this disease is gone, then you might be waiting forever. So this is why it's very important that although in the face of a disease, you go to a doctor, you take the treatment and do whatever is possible. But along with that, know that I have to operate this body and not allow my life to come to a halt by using Baba's light and might. So what is Baba's light and might? Light is knowledge and might is yoga. So every day when you listen to the Murli and you churn on the points of the Murli and when you sit in silence, connect your Buddha Yoga with Baba and feel Baba's presence and powers and love and peace and joy. That is what is going to work as a charge for the body and it's going to help you function with that ailing body. So, you know, even if 
the disease might take time it will not stop you from creating good karma during that time and the thing is if you look at it spiritually what is that disease the disease is a manifestation of a karmic account and if the disease is a manifestation of the karmic account then how can you get over it by changing your karmic account yes by shifting your karmic account from that of a debit to a credit and if you allow that disease to stop you then how will you be able to create or you know you know earn that credit of karmic account which will settle the disease so what you have to do is in the face of whatever your body is going through don't stop doing good karma don't stop doing whatever baba is teaching us as good karma whatever seva we are doing or however we are operating with friends and family and uh, you know doing it peacefully and with love and doing your work with peace and love and purity don't stop that and let me tell you one thing i have had this experience many times that sometimes you know there's a big there's a headache and uh, there's a stomach ache and there's something going on with the body and then it's like you know the body is screaming and saying just sit don't go for class <laughs> and um when and at that time i don't listen to the body i listen to baba and i go and take a class anyway and i have had this experience that 5 minutes through the class my body starts to feel okay only 5 minutes through the class and at in one instance there was this acute pain and it lasted for half an hour while i was taking the class but in that half an hour i really felt that you know baba has taken over and baba is like conducting the class himself so baba says don't lose that courage that light and might that baba is giving you will give you the power and the courage to do what you meant to do don't stop that don't stop doing what you meant to do and don't stop sharing the peace the joy the love the knowledge that baba has given you the duty to share and when you don't do stop that then your karmic account will get over and you will be in in a state where you will be again able to create good karma through the body constantly with less and less hindrance and maybe the disease will go away in the final moments like brahma baba so you know brahma baba used to cough all his life so you know there was this cough which he always had and um it despite that cough he kept uh, you, you know uh, sharing baba's murli with everyone and surrendering his body to baba so that baba could use him as an instrument and he kept doing that and just before he became avyakt just before he transitioned into the angelic form some days before he stopped coughing so you know that karmic account settled and then the coughing was not there so baba says this is how you deal with physical illness and then third thing is baba says when an illness comes it is a means of giving rest to the intellect now uh, this is a very important point to understand because rest the whole concept of rest that we have is very distorted so what do you do for rest ha huh? watch netflix so <laughs> there are these days people say that you know we 
uh, we watch uh, these online OTT this that uh, for rest and we, when we want to feel relaxed we do this and or you know you start listening to uh, some loud music or something of the old world and um, you this is the way you relax or rest or you just lie down and try to go to sleep but then your mind is being bombarded by thoughts <laughs> so all that is not rest so how do you rest so rest happens when you connect your intellects yoga with the one who is always at rest so you look at Baba who is always at rest at peace is the ocean of peace joy love and just look at Baba so stable so serene so giving all the time so Baba says when you are going through an illness know that that is the time for you to take rest and how do you take rest by connecting your buddhi yoga with the one who is always at rest and other than that whatever you do is not going to give you rest so if you think that you know watching stuff on the internet or uh, sleeping or uh, just you know sleep necessary sleep is important but if you think that sleeping for 12 hours a day will heal you that's not going to heal you so and it will mess up with your mind more and more because the more you sleep the more your subconscious will be activated and all the dirt and garbage comes out of it so have you seen that you sleep too much and then you have a headache so all of that is a sign that the we need to learn how to rest and reading something that Baba gives us or you know because they are all things of happiness and peace and when you read the Murli when you read stuff that Baba gives you when you connect your Buddhi Yoga with Baba all that is the method to take rest and uh, this is what Baba says that you need to take the ownership of relaxing yourself recharging yourself healing yourself because in this world there is no other healer <laughs> you see Baba has taught us how to heal ourselves and we need to heal ourselves and take care of ourselves and not wait for others to heal us okay Om Shanti